Today's first cafe is related to the bridge between universities and the government from the aspect of official statistics. We are pleased to have invited three resource persons who are working in academia and have great experiences to have management managed official statistics. Before the opening of today's event, I the house announcements. Please mute yourself and uh, switch off the camera while you are not speaking. And today's events are recorded along with the presentation file. They will be opened in the website. And if you have questions during the presentations, please input those questions in the chat box. I will set the question and the answer session after the presentations. I am Makoto Shimizu, officer in charge of the Statistical Institute for Asia and the Pacific, and I am the moderator of uh, today's event. At the beginning of this event, I'm pleased to invite Ms. Jima Van Hardren, the Director of uh, Statistics Division, SCAP, to deliver her welcome speech to you. Um, we are very warm welcome to everybody to this Stat Cafe, as, as uh, Tanuzi San said, it's our second art series. And I'm particularly very warm welcome to, to Dr. Basalis that we've just heard from, from uh, BCS Indonesia and also from um, Charlene in um, New Zealand. We've put together, you know, CAP has developed a very good program here for this important topic of official statistics and its relationship and harmonisation with university curricula. As we've just heard from um, Lisa Basalis there in the Philippines, um, we so rely on our university sector for the graduate intake and, and our young statisticians joining our profession, but we equally rely on the university sector to continue the research and continue the updating of our skills. Um, and the um, development of master's programs and PhD programs and um, uh, the research that's undertaken to make sure that our profession maintains its, its ongoing relevance um, as we um, you know, respond to things like the COVID pandemic, but also we respond to emerging priorities like big data and data science. So I'm really pleased, very warm welcome to you all today. Uh, CAP celebrated its 50th um, anniversary last year and this topic of um, training um, and the development of skills and the renewal of skills was an important um, important topic to recognise that CAP has been um, providing this leadership for the last 50 years and we're going to hear today um, of several institutions across our region in the Philippines, as we've just heard, in Indonesia, as well as in New Zealand, how they also are approaching this skilling and reskilling that's so important to our profession. So with that, I won't take any more time um, up here. It's very important to hear from our speakers and, and audience participation. And again, my sincere apologies for the connection issues. Thank you very much. Back to you, Mr. Sarkar. I'd like to move on to the presentation from um, Dr. Risa Grace B. Barisares. Uh, she is the professor of statistics at the University of the Philippines School of Statistics and vice president for planning and uh, finance of the University of Philippines. Uh, the title of her speech is Strong and Agile Academic Programs in Statistics in the Changing Data Landscape. So the floor is yours, Rista. 
Thank you very much, Makoto-san. It is my pleasure to be in the 39th edition of uh, the, the Asia Pacific Stats Cafe. And it's indeed my it pleasure like to share with you uh, how we harmonize official statistics in university curricula in the Philippines. I would like now to uh, share my uh, presentation. And as you have just said, uh, my uh, presentation is entitled Strong and Agile Academic Programs in Statistics in the Changing Data Landscape. This is really now our context, uh, changing data landscape. And uh, this uh, uh, changing data landscape has actually been further uh, facilitated or enhanced or uh, made faster uh, by the current COVID-19 pandemic. In my mind, academic programs in statistics should be both strong, foundation, very good, but agile, adapting to changes in the context of official statistics. So in the Philippines, Official statistics are those designated by the highest policy making body in statistics in the Philippines, which is the Philippine Statistics Authority Board. They are the ones who determine what will be official statistics, meaning statistics that will be generated by concerned agencies and will be used by everyone. So, for example, the Philippine Statistics Authority the Philippines National Statistics Office is officially the source of many of statistics like gross domestic product, which is among what it, quarter, it reports quarterly as part of the system of national accounts. We also have the monthly inflation. We also have the official poverty statistics, which is released every three years. And we have the population count, which which uh, is also released by the Philippine Statistics Authority. So others could release statistics on population in their areas, but the official count comes from the Philippine Statistics Authority and it's actually signed by the president of the Philippines uh, before actually being released. So there are about 21 universities that offer various academic programs in statistics. They range from PhD in statistics to master's degrees in statistics to bachelor of science degrees in statistics, as well as uh, mathematics degrees majoring in statistics. And there is now a trend of offering what are called professional master's degrees, which are terminal courses, but are very important for those who are actively in the profession and want to be updated. So we have, for example, professional masters in data analytics. And you can see that uh, the, these universities are around the country, but they're actually concentrated in Metro Manila, the ones with more hearts than others. Notice, please, there is no degree specifically on official statistics. Furthermore, only two of these universities offer a PhD in statistics. These are Institute of Statistics in the uh, one region near Metro Manila, the University of the Philippines Los Manos campus, and the School of Statistics, which is in the University of the Philippines in Diliman, which is in Metro Manila. I would like to share the history of the School of Statistics, of which I am a faculty. I've been a faculty member for 30 years already. And the School of Statistics was actually founded as and named as the Statistical Training Center in 1953. And what is interesting is that it was created under a bilateral agreement of the Philippine government and the United Nations because 
there was recognition that those practicing statistics in government at the time didn't have any formal training in statistics. So uh, this statistical training center was founded to, to be able to address that concern. And eventually it was transferred to the University of the Philippines and it became the statistical center and it became the School of Statistics. I believe that the School of Statistics is one of the few in the world that is specifically a college offering statistics. Most of statistics programs are in mathematics departments or mathematics colleges. How are we doing in terms of interest in enrolling in these programs? So in the School of Statistics, about 320 to 420 students every school year uh, enroll um, in various levels of uh, bachelor's uh, program. There are 95 to 118 Master of Statistics uh, enrollees. Master of Statistics is a terminal course. It's actually an applied course. About 112 to 117 Master of Science in Statistics, which is a feeder course to the PhD in Statistics. And we have professional masters in data science analytics. So the level of interest, if you view enrollment, is actually getting better and better at the level of 400 already. And in fact, if I may share with you, despite the pandemic with the problems of not being physically in classrooms, we have actually uh, maintained the level of enrollment. The Institute of Statistics has 139 to 169 BS statistics students, 18 to 32 MS statistics, a feeder course to their PhD statistics, which has 10 to 17 enrolled students uh, usually. As to graduation, School of Statistics usually graduates about 100 uh, bachelor's uh, degree uh, uh, students, uh, about 100 every year which is not enough for the growing demand of uh, statisticians in, in the market. If I again continue to focus on the School of Statistics, which I believe is similar to the other academic programs of other universities, as I've said, there is no uh, degree program that is offering specifically official statistics. However, official statistics is usually taught through specific courses. So in the School of Statistics, the course is called Philippine Official Statistics, but I would like to emphasize that all other courses, the basic and the core courses and the methods courses actually use official statistics in giving examples to students. And in fact, uh, our students are encouraged to do research on official statistics to illustrate methods they have learned. So we have the statistics on the one this is the basic one, uh, which is actually uh, uh, taken by other students of other disciplines. Of course, the usual regression analysis, time series, survey operations, sampling design, multivariate analysis and categorical data analysis. Where do the statistics graduates of the School of Statistics and the Institute of Statistics go? Using a 2019 survey of alumni, 33% of them go in banking and finance, 11% each in IT, in academe, in government, in government uh, uh, corporations, in NGOs, in market research, 7% each in business process outsourcing, biostatistics and research, 9% others, various uh, uh, industries. Uh, for the, a, from the 2015 to 2019 survey of the Institute of Statistics, 44% of their students go to finance, insurance, and real estate, very similar to where our school statistics go, students go. 35% in services, uh, 
11% in public administration, 5% in transportation, communication, electric, gas, yes, sanitation uh, uh, areas, and 5% others. So if you will notice, please, uh, the demand for statistics graduates is really uh, getting higher and higher, and uh, there is competition, and the private sector usually wins, uh, specifically in banking and finance. How do the statistics community, academic community, support academic institutions in their offering of statistics and use of official statistics in their courses? We have the PSAI, it's a Philippine Statistics, Philippine Statistical Association Incorporated. This is a professional society of uh, Philippine statisticians. This, this society actually was created a year before the School of Statistics or the Statistical Center was founded. Uh, so that was in 1952. This association was founded in 1952. The School of Statistics, which was then Statistical Training Center, was founded in 1953. And this association was actually very instrumental in the founding of the Statistical, Statistical Training Center by the Philippine government and the United Nations. And so this PSAI has an annual conference every year. We have a conference usually in September uh, and in 2018 we had one with the theme emerging trends in statistical development. In 2019 the, the, the theme was PSAI in the changing data landscape and last year despite the pandemic we continued our tradition and we had a virtual conference and these uh, conferences are usually preceded uh, a day before the actual conference. There are what we call uh, PSAI trainings. So participants are able to attend trainings, usually three or four trainings, parallel ones that they can uh, choose from, uh, which are usually the discussions that are relevant for that year on statistics. If I may share with you, many of the uh, attendees to these conferences are from academe and so they are exposed to relevant and current trends in statistics especially official statistics our association the philippine statistical association incorporated actually produces a publication which is scopus and indexed it's a peer-reviewed uh, technique scientific journal the philippine statistician and it produces many articles and they're usually research on in enhancing official statistics. Another uh, important uh, initiative of the statistics community that reaches out to academia is the Philippine Statistics Quiz. The Philippine Statistics Quiz has been going on for 26 years already and the 25th version or edition was in 2019 and this Philippine Statistics Quiz is participated in by freshman students, freshman college students all over the country, and they uh, compete. We also have a National Statistics Month. For 31 years, the Philippines has been celebrating October as the National Statistics Month, and it, this is spearheaded by the Statistics Office, the Philippine Statistics Authority. In uh, last year, again, despite the pandemic, the National Six Month was celebrated with the theme Bridging Digital Gaps, Making Information Available to All. And if you go around the country in October, you will see many of the posters showing the National Statistics Month celebration outside government agencies, including local government units. So this is supported by the mayors as well. And this National Statistics Month is capped with an oratorical contest, which is sponsored by the Central Bank of the Philippines, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, and the Department of Education. And uh, this particular oratorical contest follows the theme of the Statistics Month, which in 2019 was data innovation. Media are always with these celebrations and during the National Statistics Month, the Philippine Statistical System gives 
media awards, those who write about official statistics. The another innovation to reach out to the young about what government statistics or official statistics are is the Philippine Data Festival. So we did it in 2018, where many young people from various colleges attended and they were exposed to government, government statistics in their language. So there were games and there were apps where question like, if I want to meet a man aged 25 to 30, where are they? What, in what region of the Philippines are they most uh, located? So something very interesting to young people. And we also have every three years a National Convention of Statistics. In 2019, we, set, we did the 14th, uh, ver uh, 14th uh, convention. And usually this is participated by 1,200 uh, various participants, including academia, uh, all over the country. And in 2019, the theme was the same theme as the National Statistics Month of that year on data innovation. Uh, and some topics and sessions were uh, on theory and methodology, on international cooperation and partnership. That year, the Philippines was the chair of the BIMP IAGA. This is the regional group uh, uh, in the east, in the growth corridor. Uh, this is Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines. And uh, what should be in uh, courses that offer statistics? Uh, for me, foundation courses still should be there. So uh, we want the program to be strong. Strong means good foundation. So statistical theory, but also general education courses. Statisticians should also know of other disciplines. They should also appreciate the humanities. So in my mind, uh, statistics uh, 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 majors should still take courses in the humanities and economics, um, in social sciences, uh, to be more balanced, well balanced. Methods courses, of course, the traditional, but also the new ones, especially in big data. Geospatial information and statistics integration should be part of this agile academic program. Computer skills, communication skills, of course, ethics, open data, data privacy, data standards, and data quality, the UN fundamental principles of official statistics, and the softer skills of lifelong learning and teamwork always in the context now of blended or flexible learning both online and offline synchronous and asynchronous always remembering now we are educating the millennials they are the ones who want things to happen now uh, so uh thank you very much for your kind attention thank you very much for your wonderful presentation I understood the system to teach statistics takes root in universities in Philippines. Yes. The number of degrees is quite large. They are good background underpinning official statistics in the government. Yes. Thank official you. statistics are compiled from data, including big data in private sectors, which are not operated by the government. Statistics graduate of those curriculums are working in so broad area that they will contribute to production of big data, which might be used in official statistics. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we'll invite Dr. Erni Tree at the lecturer and the director for Technique Statistics, STIS, PPS Statistics, Indonesia. Her speech title is Providing Statisticians and Data Scientists for Government Agencies in Indonesia. Over to you, Erni. Thank you, uh, Sini Susang. First of all, I would like to 
they say thank you to can you see my screen sorry i'm not too familiar with this team yes but uh, can you oh sorry show very right. well we can see that okay is it okay 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 first of all i would like to say thank you to escap for in, uh, giving me the opportunity today to share our experience for uh, running the national statistical institute in indonesia and as introduced my name is rst astuti and i'm a lecturer and also director of polytechnic statistica sdes national statistic institute belong to bts statistic in indonesia as you can see in the screen uh, there's a picture of our tiny campus located in eastern part of uh, Jakarta, the capital city of Indonesia. Uh, let me start my presentation like Lisa with a map showing the distribution of the university in Indonesia that provide higher education in statistics. There are 43 universities and uh, as you can see, mostly located in Java Island. Uh, this is a uh, still a problem in our country in uh, the number of university in the eastern part of the nations uh, like a little bit small comparing to the west part and actually not uh, only the number of uh, university but also the quality of education and it's still a problem that it, uh, 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 we, uh, Ministry of Education have struggled uh, with, and we try our best to handle this problem. Uh, we are having an uh, association called HOSTAT, the Indonesian Statistical Institute Forum. We meet uh, every year and then we uh, communicate and discuss about the development of the statistical education in Indonesia. Uh, our institution, uh, Polytechnic Statistica SAS, is uh, also a member of this uh, association. Let me uh, tell you a little bit about our school. Actually, we are the oldest statistical institute in Indonesia. We are established in 1958. At that time, maybe like the Philippines, uh, the United Nations pushed the government of Indonesia to uh, to form a institution that have higher education in statistics to fulfill the needs of statisticians at that era. Uh, we are managed by BPS Statistic Indonesia. It means that the director of the Polytechnic Statistica SAS is under chief statistician of uh, our national statistical office which is UPS statistic indonesia and uh, through this year we are still uh, offering undergraduate program in statistical science which have majoring in applied statistics and statistical computing our task main task is to provide uh, human resources especially statistician and data scientists for National Statistic Agency and other government agency in Indonesia. Comparing to other university, uh, we have a unique position. When other university is fully under control of Ministry of Education, uh, uh, post of SAS stands between these uh, two institutions, the Ministry of Education and UPS Statistics Indonesia. In academic manner, we still look up to the rule and guideline from the Ministry of Education, such as guidance for constructing the curriculum, requirement of the lecture, number of credit uh, student must achieve to complete their study, diploma, and other things. But in non-academic matters, we are fully under BPS Statistic Indonesia, it means that budget and funding and also the lecturer and staff is uh, belong to BPS Statistics Indonesia. And in this uh, 
in this matter, we we place uh, BPS as our main stakeholder. So when we construct the curriculum, we must refer to uh, BPS. We have three programs. Uh, the first one is three years program in diploma in applied statistic, majoring in applied statistic, and two others is four years diploma. Uh, for, uh, the first one in applied statistic with minoring in economic statistic and socio demographic statistic. The other is statistical computing or computational statistic with minoring in statistical information system and data science. Uh, as you can see that uh, this minor is uh, referred to the BPS need, uh, especially in development of the of, uh, official statistic. For uh, completing the four years program, a student must achieve around 145 uh, credits. This is our graded profile in 2020. Uh, as you can see, we are preparing the field job for our three years diploma in applied statistics. And there is also intersection profile between the program. For your information, this profile is a car in our new curriculum in 2020. For the following fast growing on data science, not today, we create a new profile, which is data scientist that never before occurred. Our student is very competitive. Each year we have uh, almost 25,000 applicants and we only have uh, 600 seats uh, for the new student. Our requirement is so high. Uh, the high school graduates that can apply uh, has to uh, have a minimum score of 80 for math and English. And we also have uh, four stages of selection, including the competency-based test for government officer, mathematics, the psychological test, and health test. This competency-based test for government officer is needed because when they graduate, they will be a government officer. And we have uh, we give the student 100% free for tuition fee and other costs. The scholarship is provided by BPS Statistics Indonesia. And uh, maybe fun facts is uh, there are 75 applicants uh, have a sex ratio of girls uh, comparing to uh, boys. I don't know uh, how it's in the, the other countries, but more likely in Indonesia that women are like uh, statistic more than uh, among. This is the population of our student in this academic year. We have a total 2,280 students and mostly uh, take the diploma for in applied statistics. 60% of them comes from Java and uh, there are more women than uh, men in our student demographic. This is the curriculum structure in 2020 to give uh, you all uh, how we perform uh, the statistician and the data scientist profile. We have compulsory uh, courses and elective uh, courses with this minoring in every program. There are common course and then core course uh, which determined by Ministry of Education and also the Association of uh, higher education in uh, statistic. The, and then uh, Capstone project and international core course, and also in-depth and engagement course, which refer to BPS uh, need. In uh, Diploma 4, we have total 144, and the composition of the uh, subject is uh, seen on the screen. This is for uh, an, an example of the courses taught in our program for Diploma for Applied Statistics. The core course is uh, determined by the agreement of the member of the association to cover uh, the fundamental mathematics and statistics and also the uh, step of uh, business, a statistical business 
process from data collection to dissemination of the statistic. For institutional causes, uh, it refers to the UPS need. As you can see, we have three courses that uh, taught uh, about official statistic from introduction to official statistic, official statistic and advanced official statistic. We also, uh, other course is uh, uh, supporting uh, the uh, official statistic uh, courses. In uh, minor, in the economic statistic, uh, there are these uh courses including data mining and big data and also information to geographical information system and also we give them uh, basic economic for uh, minor in economic statistics in socio-demographic statistics we also give them data mining and big data spatial data analysis information to geographical information system and also the basic for analysis data, analyzing data in social uh, manner. Uh, and this is uh, the example of the course from D4 statistical uh, computing. You can see that uh, there are some difference in the core course than the for applied statistics because we are preparing them not only to be a data analyst, but also data engineer and system engineer. So the courses is uh, in red, is a distinction. In this case, actually, we do refer not only to uh, statistic department association alone, but also refer to computer science department association and also mathematical department association. And there are no difference in institutional course. It means that Every student in our school have to take these uh, institutional courses. In a depth and enrichment course for the minoring in statistical information system, we give them a special part from programming, computer and data network system uh, up to data mining. And also in data science for uh, data scientist profile, we give them uh, these uh, courses. Uh, let's take a look an overview of the statistic graduates in Indonesia. A member of the association excluded uh, Polytechnic Statistics SAS produced a 5 to 145 undergraduates uh, per year. But uh, we are produce almost 550 graduates per year. Up until 2020, we have graduated almost uh, 6,800 alumni, including 24 uh, alumni from the Republic Democratic of Timor-Leste. And the graduates have, as I mentioned before, have an uh, obligation to work at the BPS or other government agency for minimum two times length of study. Uh, and where do they work after they graduate? The graduates will be allocated to every BPS statistic office all over Indonesia. Uh, for your information, uh, BPS Statistic Indonesia is a vertical institution, consists of one headquarter office in Jakarta, 34 uh, BPS provincial office in each uh, capital city of the province, and also more than 500 office in municipal office. And also our graduates uh, from this year is uh, will be distributed to other government agency or ministry that are needed. Uh, so let me uh, talk to you a little bit about our mini survey that uh, 11 statistic department and also 1,902 students uh, outside uh, our school is participating to give you a, a, a few uh, from other perspective about the uh, official statistic course. Uh, among university outside the SAS, 45 of them 
uh, have uh, official statistic course in the academic uh, curriculum. And uh, inside this 45%, 60% uh, offer official statistic course of, as a compulsory course, and the rest is uh, as an elective course. And uh, who is responsible for teaching? Uh, actually, 45 of the lecturer come from VPS, our, our National Statistical Office, and the rest is from the academy. Uh, how about the material uh, course in official statistics? Uh, here are some of the material that have taught in official statistics course. And, and how about the relationship with between the member of the association to BPS. Actually, all of the university that have statistic program uh, have a good relationship with uh, BPS or, or our national statistical office. This relationship is uh, in, uh, in terms of internship. The student from the university can intern in the local BPS office. And then sometimes the university invite the professional from BPS to be a guest lecturer and also holding a seminar and workshop concerning uh, official statistics. Uh, and also BPS uh, provide data for student final year project. And then when we uh, BPS uh, have a major events such as census of big survey, then uh, we are usually involving the students of the university as a survey officer or supervisor during the census and survey. And surprisingly, 98% uh, of the students outside uh, our school want to pursue a career of uh, government office officer. Maybe uh, the reason is because of the salary, I think is quite good. And also because of the comfort uh, to work in the government institution at, uh, other than uh, in other place. Uh, but uh, as Lisa said also, there is a challenge of adaptation process for fresh graduate in our school into work environment in the BPS statistic in Indonesia. Our research study revealed that uh, almost 90% uh, supervisor or head of the department in uh, BPS statistic office are satisfied with the hard skill and competency of our graduates. The only complaining is about the soft skill, like Lisa said, and then generational uh, gap. This is a common problem, I think, because of the diversity of the generation within the same workplace, especially when the older supervisor manages the new young press graduate, because they are not, uh, they, I think they very different in the way they communicate, in the way they uh, look at the value and others. And small problem is also in uh, miss work placement. This is the inconsistency between background of education and work assignment. This is actually occurred in the municipal uh, BPS uh, office because of lack of employee there. I think that's uh, for today. Uh, back to you, Makoto. Thank you very much for your splendid presentation. Polytechnic Statistical is one of the undergraduate statistics institutes and the BPS Statistics Indonesia. Practical side of statistics is highlighted in academia. Official statistics courses are well established with 45% of statistical institutes Furthermore, 60 percentage of them is compulsory. Some of the lecturers are from BPS, partnership between the academia and the government is tight. This is quite an impressive good practice. Then we 
move on to the third speaker. Uh, we we'll invite Dr. Sharin Forbes, Director Stat Ed Consultancy New Zealand. The floor is yours. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Great. I'm just going to share my screen. Right. You can see the screen? Yes, we can see right. this very well. Right. Um, what I firstly thank you for inviting me. It's a privilege to um, share with you some of the things that we've been doing in terms of trying to teach official statistics in particular. Um, what I'd like to do today is um, not read everything that's on my slides. I've written down quite comprehensively so that people can take it away and read it for themselves when they get the slides. But I really want to focus on how we've moved from face-to-face -face teaching to e-learning in official statistics. And we've done that through a process of collaboration, through various collaborations. So the first collaboration really started in New Zealand from the National Statistics Office, Statistics New Zealand, negotiating with one of our universities, Victoria University in Wellington, a joint appointment, half time within the statistics agency and half time as an adjunct professor in official statistics. And I was privileged to have that appointment. And the primary aim of that appointment was to upskill particularly government employees. And we were concerned that a lot of um, government employees were very good in literacy skills, giving policy advice, but didn't actually have a huge understanding of official statistics or numeracy skills in general. So that collaboration resulted in, firstly, in a certificate in official statistics, and then an honours paper in official statistics. And latterly, it led to two further um, collaborations with myself and another academic from Otago University with Plymouth University in the United Kingdom and then we were contracted to do draft content for um, a UNITAR, United Nations Institute of Training, um, training and research um, e-learning course. So I'll be talking about these four different learning platforms and this is the time frame in which they occurred. So the first one is um, the New Zealand Certificate of Official Statistics. This is face-to-face -face classroom teaching. The next one is an innovative honours course in official statistics, remembering that none of our universities at this time were teaching official statistics. They used to in the past. And then I'm going to talk about some web apps we developed in official statistics that are freely accessible to anyone to get in and use and to use within the university course if they want. They're located on the International Statistical Literacy um, Program website. And finally, just a little bit about the draft content for the UNITAR massive open online course. So all of these courses have a common philosophical approach. And in fact, one of our philosophies is that we want to reuse as much material as possible and not be always recreating material. So if there's good material, open source material on the internet, we will use that rather than creating our own. But um, some things that are really important are that we needed to target content to the learners and then to set it in the real world. So use as many real case studies and stories. And particularly when we were trying to teach people who were not highly mathematical, but also with the mathematical people, more and more we're emphasizing the conceptual understanding rather than just being able to do the mathematics. And then similar to the others, want to focus on the data 
use visual and online tools in the material and have as much of an international perspective as possible. So firstly, I'll just briefly talk about the Certificate of Official Statistics. This is taught in a traditional sense with classroom teaching, but it's really targeted to the country in which it's set. So um, most of the early ones were set in New Zealand and the latter ones in the Pacific Islands. It is for people who have very limited mathematical skills and the focus is to develop those schools when they're interpreting or using official statistics and giving policy advice to government. It's also a little bit different in that it's competency based. And that means that no grades are awarded. Um, students can resit until they pass. So we've had just over 300 learners in total with slightly under half of those from national statistics offices. So it consists of four taught units, which cover the traditional things through from the UN principles right through to um, basic statistics and official statistics, data visualisation, and also evaluation of other people's work, in particular research work. And here we really stressed the meaning of a p-value rather than the ability to be able to create a p-value. And also um, another innovative thing was that a third of the credits for the certificate came from a project which was done within the student's own workplace, which might have been another government agency, it may have been the National Statistics Office, um, it may have been a local authority. And it wasn't very sophisticated, it just needed to contain some form of bivariate statistical analysis. I just given here some examples of the types of real case studies that we used, both in the teaching and to assess the students. So we use sort of traditional official statistics rele releases. We used public sector surveys, and we also used um, research and evaluation reports, as well as the odd media article that was reported in the newspaper. I want to, um, so the certificate was relatively successful um, in the years that it was functioning, but there was a demand coming to have something similar in a way, but for people with more mathematical skills. And particularly the National Statistics Office was really interested, I think, in advertising to the university statistics departments that here was a career opportunity for mathematical statistical graduates. So again, this was ne negotiated between the National Statistics Office and the universities. And the carrot for the universities was that for most of the universities, it was completely uneconomic for them to run an honours course in official statistics. We're a small country. This would have been maybe four or five students in each university. So we suggested that um, a video conferencing network, very much like what we're doing today, but this was back in 2011, be set up so that all the universities that wanted to could be linked together and the students could see and hear the, the lecturer and view the PowerPoints, just like we're doing. One of the advantages with this allowed us to use the experts who were in various universities around the country. We had a demographer, professor of demography at one university. We had someone um, who was looking at geospatial analysis in another university, someone doing data matching at a third university. But we could use each of those people and share them across all the universities. That was a traditional honours course with 12 two-hour lectures didn't have an examination. It had five assignments submitted electronically. And every year it's had 30 to 40 to 50 students from six of our eight universities. So this is very typical. You know, we are a small country. We only have eight universities. Um, six of them are normally participating. We normally have the National Statistics Office teaching and occasionally it has a student, but not often. 
we'll have four or five of the universities, the yellow ones, which have students and are involved in the teaching in one part of the course. And then we'll have one or two universities which actually aren't doing any teaching but just have students doing the honours course. So uh, I won't go through all of the topics that are covered in the honours course because they are very traditional for um, an official stats course, but just to focus on a couple which may be a little bit different, there is um, a section on the use of administrative data to create statistics and some of the issues that um, surround administrative data rather than just survey data. We do have um, a section on spatial analysis and on data visualisation. We have a section on data matching, which is the probabilistic linking of data sets which is occurring more and more, I think, in government agencies where people want to link both um, administrative data sets and survey data sets or two survey data sets or two administrative data sets. So the rest of it is fairly standard. One of the things that um, we are focusing on is even with these students using videos and visual tools to enhance their mathematical understanding, so I, I'm not going to go into the hyperlink here, it will take too much time, but this is a little visualisation of the consumer price index created by the German Statistical Office, which we use. And one of the assignments in, in the honours course is that students have to, they have to um, work out their own expenditure pattern and then they have to create a little um, price index and say why these is different to the National Statistics Office. And as they're students, the thing that really happens is that um, their rent is much greater. But when they look at this tool, they can see the basket of goods, they can see the weights as being the proportion, they can see that things that have big weights, a big area in the circle, are more likely to be similar to the overall inflation rates. And that this is an interactive tool. They can look at the things which are very much different from the current pattern of the CPI. And we're finding that students actually come away with a greater understanding of the mathematical skills. <clears throat> so two of us, um, two academics, myself and John Haraway from Otago University, decided that perhaps the university environment wasn't the only way of teaching official statistics and it would be really nice if we could actually have some electronic tools which were available free to everyone to use. And so we, um, with the Royal Statistical Society Centre for Statistical Education at Plymouth University in the UK, got together and used material from both the certificate and the honours paper to create some web apps, which we wanted to be free to everyone and available on a variety of IT platforms. So if you didn't have a laptop, you could do it on your mobile phone. So we had some negotiation about what were the most important things in official statistics for people to learn. And we had limited funding, which is always the case and decided um, collectively that really people needed to understand about price change, partly because this is also used to index lots of benefits and other things for government um, employees. And also they needed to know how to compare populations, either over time or between countries or between groups within a country. And finally, they need to be able to interpret graphs and to create their own simple graphs. And we chose to do this in Excel because that was the most common commercial product that was being used within our government agencies. Again, these hyperlinks that are on this slide will take you to these apps and they're absolutely free. Please use them however you want to use them. So just very quickly looking at the features, they, the first two apps have exactly the same structure. In the middle, in the middle, um, 
is a motivational video. For prices, it's something from our actually from our news on the TV. Hans Rosling on the population one. On the left hand side is commentary. So it could be history, it could be the world population discussion. On the right hand side, so we're looking here at the um, the prices one. But on the right hand side, we have the mathematics, how to construct a price index, how to do percentage change, etc. time series. This is what it looks like on a laptop on the left and on the right on a smartphone. Similarly for tables, they're horizontal on a laptop and vertical on a smartphone. And I've already talked about the structure here, but this is another one showing you that for populations, on the right hand side are all of the calculations. Here's life expectancy, comparing populations where you get age standardization, comparing groups where you'll get relative risk and odds ratios and things like that. One of the features is that we've deliberately used structured learning. So there are little boxes within exercises that people fill out and the exercises get harder and harder, but also they're marked electronically. Um, and there is no, there's no certification associated with the web apps. They've proved to be quite popular. And um, as you can see, they've all had over 10,000 unique visits since they were first put up in November 2017. So on to um, oh, one other thing I did just quickly want to say is that I won't go into this, but it's relatively easy to translate these apps. They're in English, but we've tried translating them into other languages using Google Translate and have found that um, you get a first step of usable but not perfect if, um, Portuguese using Google Translate. And we've also tried doing it into our indigenous language, Māori. And again, you know, you would need a professional to go through it afterwards, but it does do a first step. And then finally, in 2019, um, John and I were asked to provide the draft content for the UNITAR e-learning course, monitoring, which is set up to monitor progress towards the UN7 Sustainable Development Goals. I just want to say before I go on that this course is still open. This course is also free. You can get into it and have a look and see what sorts of things um, are happening here. And I've included it because it reuses a lot of material from the other courses, but also official statistics are really the basis of material that's needed to monitor progress towards the UN sustainable goals. So I've put here um, some of the resource material that we use, and we have this philosophy to reuse as much as possible. This is the course, Understanding Data and Statistics Better for More Effective Sustainable Development Goal Decision Making. The last time I looked at it, it had over 800 students. It's still open. It was going to close in December 2020, but because of the pandemic, it's still open. Anyone can get onto it. And if you want to have a look at it, all you do is sign up. And then you have access to the course and can see um, some of the initiatives that are going on. Many of these students are actually from Africa and from Asia. This is the content of the course, which I won't go into. You can read it for yourself. That's what it looks like when you first get in. You just double click on anything you want to look at. You don't have to do it in order. You can move around. It does use lots of videos, and I've actually given you the hyperlink to this video. So many of the exercises are set around real case studies, and that's a very strong part of this, is telling stories with the data that we have and then asking questions. It does have ordinary sorts of exercises, many of which will um, have an embedded Excel spreadsheet or other source of data. But some of the exercises are quite innovative. They can be just game playing exercises. Or um, the one at the on the bottom right here 
is a direct link to, I think, the Vietnamese National Statistics Office and it step by step guides people through how to download some data from the National Statistics Office. The big issues are that there are data. There's either too little data. So, if, for example, with rotavirus targeting, um, there was a lot of, there was actually many millions of dollars given to target rotavirus for the vaccine. But in fact, in the countries where rotavirus was most prevalent, they only had diarrhea information and not rotavirus information. The other issue is that there can be too much data. We're all talking about big data, but when you get into climate data, it's very, very big data. And then the other issues are quality. So we're now getting citizen generated and web scraping data. And also the format of data when we're talking about imagery. And the final issue is what is the place of assessment, both formative and summative, in our official stats teaching? How much of it should we have and when should we have it? So the successes um, of, of this e-learning course in particular uh, that it's really good for people who are monitoring progress or designing interventions for the sustainable development goals, partly because it focuses on the data. It's not our course, it's a UNITAS course, we just provided some draft content, but it really does have a data focus. Where do you find data? What's the quality of the data? What can you learn from data? It also focuses on using the data you've got not looking for perfection because the cost of doing nothing may be far greater than the cost of doing something. One of its successes is that, in fact, in all of these, I want to stress the fact that there's multidisciplinary cooperative teams working with diverse skills, not just mathematical statistics, but information technology and course design experts. This particular course is free and it's self-paced and you can move around and it really does provide an international perspective. So my final comments are that there are some threads in all of those four programs which are common. First, they have academics and national statisticians working together. They emphasize the data, playing with the data and telling stories. And for me, and it's a an acknowledgement that we're in an entirely new world in terms of both statistics and official statistics teaching. We've got new modes of teaching, new modes of assessment, emphasis on understanding concepts rather than mathematics, new collaborations between universities, across university departments, between government and university, and between countries. And we can now use visualization rather than mathematization. So Cobb in 2007 said, we are finally free of the tyranny of the computable. We have a growing importance of time and place, the geography and our data. And we now are beginning to link between the criticality of a problem, how important is this problem, and what level of significance statistical significance or confidence should we have in our decision making? So I'm talking about decision making in the context of real questions. So thank you very much for li listening and I guess we're going to have questions soon. So I'll just see if I can unshare this. Thank you very much for your enlightening presentation. Network of Academics in Official Statistics from the universities, develop the content, teach courses, and assess students. Students are international academics and national statisticians are working together. Some of the materials are opened in the website. All of the practices are attractive success examples and also help advance capacities of government statisticians on the globe. Thank you. Now we move on to the question and answer session. I noticed that in the registration process, we received one question, how to successfully use statistics in 
flexible learning in the new normal, but it was included in the Shireen's presentation. And in the chat box, uh, I have uh, three important questions at this stage, and uh, which uh, should be answered by all of the speakers. One is the question, how to entice students to take statistics degrees? Because they are, they are not so interesting. Uh, and uh, another question is, are you aware of any academic course on official registers performance? For example, population register or civil register. The third one is, generally, do such courses held under statistics field of study or data science or something else? I'd like all of you to answer those three questions because they are linked with our main topic today. So first, Lisa, please answer to those three questions. Thank you very much. Uh, as to enticing students to enroll in statistics programs, the uh, in the Philippines, the initiatives I pointed out where the statistics community partners with academia are one of our strategies. We have the Philippine Statistics Quiz. These are participated uh, in by uh, freshman students, actually. So some of them have shifted to statistics eventually. Uh, we also have the oratorical contest, which is participated in by uh, fourth year students, high school students, senior students. Uh, and uh, because all of these advocacies involve faculty and teachers. The faculty and the teachers in high school are actually some of our champions. They would actually uh, uh, tell their students about statistics programs. Uh, but of course, another is for the schools to actually visit high schools during a time when students are uh, uh, apply applying in graduate, uh, in, in, in in universities. But in my mind, one really important uh, way is to engage with media. If media will write about official statistics, the general public will get to understand more what these are. And usually in the Philippines, it's the parents and the teachers that influence. So once uh, adults, get to know, understand more statistics, that's a really great uh, advocacy. I, I, I believe, uh, as to the other question on registers and the population registers and civil registration in the Philippines, no course, uh, well, in the School of Statistics, we don't have such a course. So that could be a new uh, addition to academic programs. These are uh, the promotion of uh, the data ecosystem using various sources of information to uh, produce official statistics. So coupled with big data as well. I think I, I will answer only those, uh, Shimitsu-san. Thank you very much. Now uh, I'll ask Erni to answer those questions. OK, thank you, Shimitsu-san. Uh, how to make students interest in taking their degree in statistics. I think in Indonesia, uh, we should uh, socialize more about statistics with different approach, like uh, Charlene said before, that we have to make uh, statistics fun and uh, less mathematics, I think. Uh, we are, the association, occasionally uh, running an Olympiad statistic for the high school student. And the participant, I think it's quite high in Indonesia. And also the statistic department is among five uh, departments in university that uh, students are interested in, in Indonesian case, I think. 
I think that's for me. Thank you very much. Then, Sharon, please. Thank you, Sima Shustan. Um, there are interesting questions. I think that um, in New Zealand, we also take part in the International Statistical Literacy Project poster competition in our schools. But we have a very active um, National Statistical Association. And one of the things we've achieved is getting the mathematics curriculum in our schools right through from new entrants through to the senior secondary school is now called mathematics and statistics. So people are very aware of statistics. We also um, have regular um, news articles in our national news about statistical releases, particularly things like the consumer price index, which everyone seems to be interested in. And if anyone wants to, they can go on to the price web app and look at um, a little, what we think is best practice reporting from the media in terms of, they've used the actual graphs from the National Statistics Office, but they've made it fun. They've got Dancing Cows, for example, it's about the, um, the dairy price index. So I think that that's a trick, is to, a trick. That is the key to enticing people, is to make it um, fun and attractive. But also, what we're finding is that many of the students who traditionally might have gone to statistics are going to courses in universities that are now called data science. And they're not very different, but they're just called data science. So they just have a little bit more sort of computing in them, um, but it seemed to be a more attractive name for some students. And with the last question about population registers, um, some countries have population registers and others there's quite a high resistance. In, in my country there would be a lot of resistance to a population register and in fact it would be illegal. But um, we have other methods for trying to collect data together. So that's why we do things like probabilistic matching. So we're not creating a register, we're um, matching data sets to get information almost anonymously. Thank you very much. Then I found the uh, other three questions. One is, how do you recommend to build and uh, manage projects based on real life data? And uh, the next one is, uh, Internship program, uh, their internship program. And uh, the other one is, how can we integrate statistics into the curriculum using blended learning? I'd like you to answer those questions. Uh, first, Lisa, please. Thank you very much. So uh, blended, blended learning is the mode of delivery of learning. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe Charlene has really great examples of how it is done now. But here in the Philippines, the uh, uh, what we there are two ways that we are delivering uh, statistics courses. One is uh, through modules that are emailed or printed copies sent to the students who don't have good access to internet. Then there are online sessions to discuss what are in the modules. So it's now a modular approach where the courses are, di are, are divided into several modules and these modules are delivered both online and offline. So uh, uh, that's really how to go uh, nowadays. But the 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 I find that uh, statistics oh, courses need to be developed differently now. We cannot have the same lecture notes that we have been using during our, our uh, face to face classroom setting. The modules should be more interesting even to statistics majors and how to make them interesting. Use uh, data visualization, use actual data, official statistics. Uh, 
uh, and in a way, as I've said, we are now uh, educating millennials. So we really have to make our modules catered to how they now learn. Uh, and so we have to now we are we are not millennials, but we have to put ourselves in their shoes. So I always ask my grandchildren, so how do you how do you learn things now? So it's with their hands, uh, either actual physical things or through computer work. So we really have to to do it that way. But I still emphasize the importance of rigor, rigor of theory. Uh, before we go to this fancy or less boring, they have to go through the rigor of the foundation courses in statistics. I, I will answer only the question. Uh, thank thank you, you for your kind answer. And Erinie, please. Yeah, I also uh, want to, uh, to answer the blended learning in this situation. Uh, I think this pandemic situation pushed us to do this kind of uh, learning and make us more creative uh, instead of uh, delivering the material of the course. We are still learning uh, to apply this method now and we also evaluate for uh, almost one, one year and a half. We do it uh, offline, uh, online I think. And then uh, when this pandemic, I think the next uh, the next uh, uh, lecture will be delivered in blended learning. But uh, I don't know if it is. Uh, I think it's hard uh, because uh, most of the material in the statistics is uh, mathematics, and we derive uh, formula, and then we uh, the student have to work uh, harder. I think. To, to learn what we taught them to. We still evaluate uh, how it uh, will be best for the lecturer and also the student. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then, Shireen, please. I think I've forgotten the questions apart from the one on blended learning, but um, with that one, I think that it's not just learning that's going to be blended, but the way we assess is going to change as well. So. Um, I think students are demanding more of us. So the honours course that I was talking about, all of those lectures, because they're being done, um, they're being recorded, they're available to students. They can re-look at them at any time. They can, um, and I think this is a growing demand, partly now that we've had the pandemic, students want to be able to go back and listen to what the lecturer has said. So that's um, a new form of blended learning. But also, I can't think of any, um, no, our traditional mathematics courses may still be traditional mathematics courses, but any courses that have any applied aspect to them are now using the internet. They're using videos, they're using all sorts of other media within the courses. There aren't many traditional courses left apart from the pure mathematics courses and I think I disagree a little bit with Lisa because I, I think there's a growing tendency in my country to have statisticians who are going to be mathematical statisticians be mathematicians first as we were there was no there was no statistics when I became a statistician we we were in trained in mathematics courses and in fact we did a lot of theory and proof and um, theorem proof type mathematics. But I think to get the interest in statistics first and, and then some of our mathematical statisticians will become mathematical statisticians. Thank you very much. Uh, there are some other questions, but the time is uh, running out now. So we have to conclude today's Stats Cafe. I hope these events are fruitful for your thinking in this bridge between universities and the government, and hope those areas will be developed in future. Thank you very much for three presenters, as well as uh, Ms. Jima Van Harderen and uh, 
Ms. Pinarucha, who organized this event, and uh, a statistics division members of SCAP who helped us. Thank you very much for all audiences. And uh, stay safe. Have a nice end of this month and a happy new month from tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Nice to see you all. Lovely to see you all.